Hello! It's that wonderful time between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Time to be thinking about Christmas gifts for folks. Up at Thanksgiving time, went up and hung out with some relatives and they broke out this, uh, this game called Aggravation, which was rather enjoyable to play. It's a, it's a board game where you move marbles around, you roll dice, and things happen. And it was actually pretty darn fun. And it made me think of my brother-in-law, who really likes to play board games, and also, in addition, has got a couple kids who are prime board game age. They are, let me see if I've got my good uncle hat on here, third grade in kindergarten. And this game actually works pretty well for that age group as well. Uh, you might have to bend the rules a little bit to keep the uh, gameplay rolling for their attention spans. But moral of the story is this aggravation game works great for young and old. So that's what this video is all about. Making an aggravation board game for my brother-in-law. And I'll show you what the plan is. Oh shoot, am I missing one? I'm missing a circle here. I'm gonna need to add that. There, we'll just pretend that that's the other hole that I didn't draw in there. So, this is a whole bunch of holes, and I had, oh man, I wasn't, I don't have a CNC machine, so I wasn't really sure how I would get everything laid out. So my idea was, I'll plot it out, I'll draw it all up, I'll print it out to scale, one-to-one -one scale, I'm gonna roughly cut it out, and I'll use some adhesive to stick it down on the wood, and then I can just go over to the drill press and and drill all of these. Oof, that's gonna be a lot of holes. My marbles that I got, I found these things online. Different colors, comes with dice and stuff. You see, I think they say these are 18 millimeter marbles, which is pretty darn close to three quarters of an inch, just a, just a teeny bit less than three quarters of an inch. So I went to my rich boy woodworking store. Three quarter inch. Not exactly sure though if this is gonna work uh, chucked up into the drill press. Not sure if it'll spin fast enough. If it doesn't, we'll come up with something. Maybe a good excuse to buy another tool. And Shazam, Bob's your uncle, quite literally. I also have uh, on the back side of this, I have a four person board, four player board. It's basically the same thing, just not six, it's just four. I'm gonna take a little break for a public service announcement here. I guess a public service announcement for everybody except my brother-in-law, because by the time he's watching this, he already has one of these aggravation board games, so it doesn't really matter to him. But I just wanted to point out to folks that I'm gonna be making this in kind of a medium complexity manner. And if you're interested in building one of these yourselves and you don't have the tools and such that I'm using for this, uh, you could really simplify this whole build by just getting a two foot by two foot piece of plywood from your local hardware store. They come pre-cut. Um, you could use a four cinder bit, something like this for drilling the holes for the, uh, for the marbles to go in. I mean, and it doesn't have to be perfect with how they're spaced out on there. Um, and if you're gonna do something like that, really all you need is a drill and an old circular saw that maybe you bought 30 years ago to cut the roof of a buddy's Volkswagen Rabbit off. I'm just saying, could happen. And then if you're gonna finish it, you could just, you know, brush on some polyurethane or spray paint or house paint or whatever. There's all kinds of options there. No real wrong answer when it comes to finishing something like that. Um, but. The secret sauce for this build is really the plans that I made that allow you just to have the pattern to follow. And um, I'm not really planning on making those available for folks, but I guess if there's enough interest, I could do that. So go ahead, if you want the plans, uh, go ahead and put a comment down below. And uh, if I get enough interest, I might jump through the hoops to do that. 
Uh, and if I do something like that, I'll drop a link down in the description and I'll probably update the thumbnail or something to say that, that uh, plans are available, something like that. All right, on with the show. Step one, I got this oak one by six. So what I'm gonna do, get the table saw out, rip down the sides to make sure that they're good and square. And then we'll glue this up into a slab that's the right size. Um, let that dry. I might run it through my planer just to make sure that everything is nice and flat. All right, four boards, essentially the same length. Next step is to make sure that the blade is good and square, which it's not. That's square enough for what we're doing. All right, make a few cuts, and then do the other side. All right, let's see how we did. Goodish, but not good enough. We're gonna have to do a little trickery here. So here's our trickery. Uh, I want these boards to be nice and flat, and they've gotta have the exact same angle on them in order for everything to be perfect. Um, so I can actually put them together like this, run them through the table saw, and you can see I put a little line over here and I labeled them AA. So if my blade isn't perfectly square, there you go, if it isn't perfectly square, then that's fine because when I put them back together, you see, they share that exact same angle there. So, give it a shot. You know, to really do this right, I think I'm gonna do the blue tape and CA glue trick so that they stay perfectly where they're supposed to while I run them through the saw. Blue tape, CA glue, also known as super glue. Our activator. Boom. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Time to start gluing this thing up. I have pipe clamps that are way too long, but they'll do the job. I actually had to put some bungee cords over here on this side to keep from doing that. Anyway, we'll get this glued up, let it sit, and then move on to the next step. Those are some beautiful boards. I mean, that one, that seam you can get on, I don't even think you see it. I can glue these guys up, we should be good to go. All right, while the glue's drying, let's go ahead and figure out how deep to drill these guys. This is going to a house with some kids that can get a little rambunctious at times. And so we're gonna go deep but not too deep. I don't know, this is not the drill press that I will be using, but it'll be a good experiment. I'll just put a handful of different holes in here, different depths. I mean, if a guy had a plunge router, you could just go but this guy doesn't have a plunge router. I don't think. Nope. Fast, watch, uh, watch out, something might happen. Mm, no, we'll just go like that. Well, that's gross. Glad I'm practicing. That is not good. Ah, I have an idea. What if a guy did a pilot hole? Just, just 
just a little, just a little hole. I'm gonna have to go think for a bit. All right, I broke out the router. It's not a plunge router, but we'll just mess around and see if we can make some good looking holes. Damn good looking hole there. Not very deep at all. That's not secure enough for your kids. That's pretty good. Oh, that's rock solid. That's not going anywhere. That's really not going anywhere. I can just hear it not, right now hollering when somebody bumps that one. This would make for a much quieter gameplay, this one. Actually, that's in there so far, it's kind of hard to pick up. So this is it right here, point one. Let's just call it seven. That's it, right there, point one seven on the money. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Boy, that's gonna be a bugger drilling all those holes with the router though, but that's what we do. Appropriate adhesive. Spray a little bit on here. Now, let it tack up. Boom. All right, now we get to work. Boy, howdy, do we ever. That's gonna be a lot of work. So the idea is that I can just go right along this board here and sit here and look through the little window and go boop, boop. And what they say, thousand mile journey starts with one step. pretty good. I don't mind that one bit. But let me tell you what, that was much better than the drill press. It turns out the drill press would have been a really bad idea. This wasn't bad at all. I think I'm gonna have an adult beverage and figure out what the next step is. Well, that turned out nice. I think it's time to move on and do the next side. Let's see, let's just harness the power of magic to get this done. Abracadabra. It's magic. Moment of truth. They work. They can stand up to some medium level roughness. Standard spasticity. Pre-hurricane. That should work. I'm gonna round over the corners on this. So no sharp edges, it'll look nicer. Boy, that really makes it look classy. Sanding, because that's what I do. How do you know you sand a lot? You have a file box full of your sandpaper that's all labeled by Grit and Kite, and you also have a shelf full with extras to refill your file box. So that's a pro tip in case you send as much as I do. Sanded for a fair bit, did the sides. Uh, took it up to 180 Grit, and then I wiped it down with some Mineral spirits, just to see if there's any scratches that stand out at me. I switched over to using this piece of plywood as my backing instead of the metal welding table because who knows what random scratches will show up from the metal table, but 
this piece of plywood here that did the job. But I don't see any random scratches in here, so I'm gonna move on to the next step. This is how the four person game starts. Red marbles go in their home here, black and such. And when you roll a six, you can take your marble and you move it up to your starting position. And really, starting position can be anywhere. But artistically speaking, I think I'm gonna choose this corner to be the starting spot. That, that fits in. So these guys are all gonna have to get painted red for the home base, red. This starting spot gets red and you cruise all the way around. And then when you're done, you need to land in these four as, as the finish shoot. So these four will get painted red in this case. And then I'll just work my way around. Quick trip to Michael's and some acrylic paint. I'm gonna get to work. Hmm, looks like I might need to do two coats. Ah, this is why I don't paint fingernails and toenails. All right, worst case, I can just sand that stuff off when it dries. Well, that's done. I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'll just run over it one more time, sand it, because I had a hard time staying inside the lines. But that turned out really nice. I might do a couple more coats on this yellow, just because that's pretty, it's pretty see-through. Everything else turned out to be pretty good, though. Yeah, that's professional grade. Well, that cleaned up nicely. So we'll get this ready for staining. I'm going to break out my HVLP spray gun. I'm gonna spray this uh, lacquer on here. This stuff goes on great. It's self-leveling, it's water resistant. So if you get your hot chocolate spilled on it or whatever, it's gonna clean up really good. Well, I think I'm all set up. Got the garage cracked, got the door open over there, got a fan blowing, so I got some air moving through. Give this thing a few coats. It's a multi-step process. It's a coat with an hour sand, coat with an hour sand, coat and done kind of thing. But it's gonna look sharp when we're done. Let's get to it. This is the last coat of lacquer on the last side. And really all you gotta do in between coats is we're just knocking off the dust nibs that set up. So just a little Scotch-Brite here and just a light back and forth. And that just knocks off any little dust chunks that might've had some lacquer on it. If you don't do this, what happens is those things just get taller and taller and taller. And then you end up with these really oddball looking pimply things on it. And nobody likes that. Well, there you have it. The finished product. This was a really fun project to make. I learned a few things along the way as well and hope you did too. All right, thanks and we'll see you next time.